everyone, it's Joni Young here. Thanks for joining me again. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to paint this new piece called I'll Wait For You. We'll be working on a 12 by 16 double primed canvas. Again, it's a recycled older painting and I'll list all the colors and the brushes we're using in the description below. So let's get started using a mop brush, phthalo blue and cobalt blue, titanium white, Get all three colors on the tip of the mop brush and I'm going to apply it by dusting little circles very lightly all around. I'm going to make some parts darker and some of them are going to be lighter. So for today's painting, we're going to be using a combination of the phthalo blue, cobalt blue, um, or ultramarine blue. We'll be using some orange, some yellow, turquoise, and some black uh, for the, all the branches and for part of the lantern. And we'll also be using some light purple violet or quinacridone magenta. Um, I've got my Holby Neon Purple Violet, and now if you don't have that, then like I said, Quinacridone Violet will work, Quinacridone Magenta, or any purple that you like will work as well. So now I'm going to twist my brush around, twirl it around, and create small hazy little circles. And I'm going to pick up different blues sometimes more blue sometimes i'm going to add a little bit of white to them so i'm just going to try to change it up each time and i'm going to use this brush to do this and then i'm going to also switch over to um, my mini fan brush just so that you guys can see how each brush works for this and you can try them both and decide which one you like using more um, I actually liked working with the mini fan brush better for the circles. Uh, the mop brush I found to be a lot nicer uh, when blending and softening all the colors up. So we're going to have a soft blanket of snow down here on the bo bottom in the foreground with an old vintage style lantern resting on it and then we're going to have some hanging cascading branches covered in pa pastel shades of blue and purple snow it's a really pretty warm cozy winter type of painting a bit of magical and whimsiness to it Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. It's a longer one, and I want to thank you guys. Um, by the way, for my last video, you all commented and said that you were really enjoying these long tutorials. You like that I'm taking more time and breaking it down into slower, longer steps for you. So I'm listening to what you guys are asking for, and I'm trying to do that the best I can for you. So wherever I want it darker, I'll be using less white and more of that cobalt or ultramarine blue, phthalo blue. And you can see over there on the left, sometimes I'm just dipping my brush into that water, barely touching it. I just want a little, little bit of water on there to help that paint flow. Now it's raining at my place right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Maybe that's relaxing and you guys like it or maybe it's bothering you. I apologize uh, in advance for that. I personally like the sound of raindrops hitting the roof when I'm, especially when I'm painting. So I'm gonna wash this brush out now. And I'm gonna take another one, a smaller size this time. And here's my uh, light purple violet that I love so much. 
go ahead and squeeze a little bit of that out. And I'm going to actually switch over to this mini fan brush, pull in that beautiful purple and a little bit of white just to lighten it up a little bit. Okay, let's begin one right here. So I'm going to press and twist it around. Again, pull and twist. Let's get a little bit more purple in this one so it's a bit darker. So the idea is just to overlap them and make them all a little bit different. It's nice when they're a little bit translucent too, so um, you can use a bit of water on your brush to help it make to help make it look like it's see-through and transparent. I'm going to pull a little bit across the bottom here too. I really want to incorporate this light purple violet and all, all the aspects of this painting today. You guys know it's my favorite color. If you've watched a lot of my videos, I talk about this color all the time. So very softly and gently, just sweeping that brush guiding it across the canvas there at the bottom and then I'm going to twist around make some another or some more little orbs here I don't even know what they are they're just really pretty and I just kind of got carried away with it I wasn't going to do this many I was just going to do um, maybe three or four and just in blue at the start but you know this always tends to happen to me when I'm painting I have one idea in mind and then it kind of just transforms into something else um, that's the exciting part about being an artist though and creating all these ideas come to you as you're you're working on something and and it's just a really good exercise I like to do this every once in a while create different shapes and interesting backgrounds in my paintings and again I'm overlapping now sometimes adding some of that phthalo and all these colors look nice together and blend well together so don't worry about them mixing together um, to make a an ugly color that won't happen it's just not possible when we're using this palette now I'm gonna use a clean brush squeeze out some of this beautiful turquoise it's a cool wintry minty color that I love take a little bit of titanium white and I've got my mini mop brush do some mini little orbs now well, I want to give a shout out to Kendra Benson um, if you ever go check out my Facebook art page it's Joni Young Art I'll often um, post my newest paintings and ask all of you viewers and followers of mine to help me title my paintings so this one in particular I couldn't decide I just couldn't think of a name for it and I had a lot of you helping me out so thank you but Kendra I chose yours um, I just loved it as soon as I read it I thought it was very fitting um, she chose the title I'll wait for you and it was just perfect for this painting so thank you Kendra And back to that mini brush now. Let's take some cobalt, blend it with some of that teal or turquoise. There's a little bit of white in my brush still. And we'll pull and twist around. Now don't worry if the bristles start to uh, spread apart or clump together. That creates an even nicer pattern. You get all those little rings in your orbs or circles that look really neat. So 
I don't know how many more uh, winter paintings I'm going to be doing. It's uh, December 2nd now, and I've done quite a few. I've got lots in my playlist. Oh, and I'll have a link below for you guys if you want to click on my playlist. You can see all of my whole collection of winter and Christmas themed and inspired tutorials, Christmas ornaments. Um, after I am finished with my winter themed tutorials, I am going to begin a series of florals. It's something that I've been getting requests for and I don't have many of them. So these are going to be uh, like close-ups of flowers. So I had one request for uh, a rose with little dew drops on it. So I have that on my list of tutorials coming up for you guys in January. I will be doing an iris and if you guys have any requests comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see and I will give you a shout out on one of those following videos. So I've got a round brush, just a medium size turquoise and white twisting and rolling my brush and then getting a little scoop of it right on the tip of my brush to work with. Now I'm going to do some little dots and dabs in here straight up and down with my brush pushing a little bit just want to light up this area down here a bit doing small little circles continuously not letting my brush off that canvas very lightly going around and around making it a little bit larger so we get this nice soft glow it's all about creating a very soft moody painting so in order to do that you've got to take your time and dab and blend and soften so here I'm just using my finger to just dab that off and then I'm going to take my round brush and just pull and flick a little bit and then go around very lightly again creating that little haze a ring around these little orbs or maybe they're little snowflakes with the light hitting them or even stars you guys can decide make it up as you go along you can create your own little stories for your paintings Now where this lantern is going to be setting in the snow, the warm light from the flame is going to be um, shining down and glistening on that snow. So we're going to have a, a soft peachy color down there and I'm going to be using uh, neon orange and white. If you don't have any neon colors that I'm using today, that's okay. You can use any orange or yellow that you have. It'll work just fine. So here I've got a combination of neon orange, neon yellow, and white on my round brush. And I'm just going to very lightly blend back and forth. I don't want to push too hard. And I want to make sure that the paint underneath, that bluish paint there, is all dry. Now my studio is always very warm. And it is dry. Now if, if you pick up any of that blue and it mixes with the orange, you're going to get... Uh, kind of a muddy tone. It'll be sort of a brown muddy tone and you don't want that. So double check that guys before you start applying this. I don't know how the sound quality is going to be for this video. Uh, my microphone that I usually use for my tutorials and voiceovers is broken, so I'm waiting for my new one to come in, and I hope this isn't too bad. I apologize in advance if it is, guys. So now I'm going to be working on the little candle inside, painting it mainly orange. 
I'll be using a combination of yellow, orange, and white for creating a glow kind of at the, the top there. And then at the bottom of the candle, I will be using um, purple and a little bit of blue and then a bit black later on for a nice dark shadow. Let's take those colors again, more yellow and white. And just do a little dab in the middle for where the flame's gonna start and then scumble and blend softly around the outside. Again, I'm using a small to medium size round brush for this. And now I'm just gonna take a little bit of the phthalo or turquoise and begin the outline, the basic shape of this lantern. So it's just a simple rectangle and I'm not gonna use a ruler. I'm not gonna worry too much about making sure it's perfectly straight. I like to approach all my paintings freehand. And while I've got this color on my brush, I'm going to do a few more of these little orbs. I've got more of the phthalo on my brush than the turquoise at this point. So I just want to create more blue around the outside of this lantern. And I'm going to pick up some of that violet, blue, and white, mix those colors up, and start working on some more of the color here in the foreground. Slowly start coming in with some shadows. I'm going to gradually start adding some more shadows with phthalo and some violet. dabbing and wiggling around with my brush a little bit for this and then we'll get started on that candle and more detail within that candle and the lantern. I want to create a softer haze coming out of this flame and I'm using a watered down turquoise. Just blend that in softly. Okay, using that round brush again, I've got some violet and some phthalo, and I'm going to start working on the shadow on this candle. Just a thin little line on the, both sides and across the bottom, and then it's going to be thicker, gradually going up from the bottom. And I'll use a little bit more purple for that, just because I think it looks really pretty. Let's, with a clean brush, use a little bit more white in the center and a little bit more yellow. Soften and scumble. And now I'm going to begin the highlight on the glass or frame of the lantern. So a skinny line on either side. Again, you can use a ruler if you like. And then some more of the peach color across the bottom using a flat brush to get those nice straight edges. And then a little bit of black or violet just at the very bottom base of that lantern. I've got the light purple violet on my brush and I'm going to pull across. And then down. So wider on the top and thinner on the sides.
Now time for some black. And you can paint any kind of lantern that you want. There's so many pictures out there you can use for references. I encourage you guys to do that too. Just take my ideas and um, create something unique for yourself. And if you have, and if you just really like this lantern, then by all means, go ahead and and paint the same one. I have no problem with that at all. So I'm just going to define all these edges with the black, building up more of the contrast. Okay, back to the brown brush. It's got a nice pointy tip so I can do a little bit more detail with this. So it's just like a little, almost like a little square on top of that. I don't want to cover up all that purple because it's so pretty so I'm just going to Add a little bit of black around it. Outline this part a little bit. And right underneath. Now I'm going to do a few more lines here on either side and then I'm going to make uh, a thicker black line on either side and on the top and you can use your either your flat brush for this or the round brush either one will work just fine so pulling up and pushing slightly using just black paint right now. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm gonna paint the handle just pulling it around in one stroke. You'll get nicer edges if you do that. And I just wanted to use the uh, round brush for that. And then I'm going to come in and pull off with a damp filbert brush some of the excess there and wipe it off on my towel. And then I go back and I pull just to even it all up. There, that looks better. It was just a little bit too thick. I'm also going to add a highlight to the underneath part of this handle with uh, the same colors as the candle or the flame, that warm fuzzy peachy color. And I'll be using a liner brush for that. So I'm taking the orange and the yellow. And again, you don't have to have neon colors for this. You can use, that's just my personal preference. You can use any yellow or orange that you have or that you prefer. Okay, so now I'm just going to add some more color to this flame with that yellowy orange, leaving a little bit of the uh, white in the middle. And let's go around the inside edges to continue that glow and highlight. Now while I'm doing this, I want to give a few quick shout outs to a few of my favorite art channels out there, ladies. Uh, Chrissy Canvas Art, she's from the UK and she blows me away every week with her beautiful, vibrant paintings. 
and she just paints everything from wildlife to landscapes, florals. So I'll post a link to all of these ladies in my description below. So go and check their pages out or their channels. Um, and next is Paint Pino in Perth with Emma. She is amazing. She's in Australia and does great quick step-by-step -step tutorials um, using lots of things that you wouldn't normally think of using to create paintings. So you'll learn a lot from her channel. And then next is Maria from Love Party Paint. She is so unique with her videos. She's extremely talented with art and her videos are so fun and energetic and she puts them together so artistically. Um, so yeah, give her channel um, a look. And then my last one, I know there's a ton of channels I really like and admire out there, but I don't have time to list all of them in this video. Um, but her name is Catherine Christina and she has an Earth Angel channel where she is so inspiring and motivating and does healing with colors, textures, crystals, card reading, and she's just such a delight and positive, happy energy, uh, beautiful soul, and you must go check her channel out. So again, I'll leave links down below for all of those. Back to this painting, I'm still adding that fuzzy peachy color and those little blobs that you're wondering about that I just added are highlights on the snow that are on the branches cascading or hanging down. So it may not make sense now, but it will later. And I just have that color on my brush, so I decided to uh, add some of that right now. Now I picked up some more of that purple violet and I'm gonna add a line of that across the bottom. And I'm just taking a little bit of light blue and dusting it around the outside of that flame just for a little bit of a shadow and I also did a few little dots in a bit of a pattern there on the top of the lantern um, you could do this uh, with a few different shapes you could do some star shapes be creative um, but yeah it's just kind of pretty it adds a little bit more light Just adding a few little faint lines here in the flame to break it up a little bit away from that glow and then I'll be adding a tiny little line at the top of the candle just part way down from the top I'm just using a little bit of the orange and the white right in there. And here we go, just a little skinny line. Okay, so after playing around a little bit with the color below on that lantern, um, I decided to add a little bit more of the light color in those little dots with some purple around. And I'm going to take my round brush with that peachy color and carefully do a little highlight right underneath that black. And I just went over the black a little bit too much, so I'm going to um, add a little bit more on the top to even that out. I'm going to dust a little bit more of that glow down below and then a little bit of the violet, purple violet with some white. It kind of has a pinky tone when you add white to it. It's really pretty. Let's take some more of the black now and do a few little dabs here along the side. Okay. 
Okay, so here we go. Let's add a little bit of that black as carefully as I can. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. It's art, not a photograph. I can get a little bit more right over here. There, see how that stands out so much better? A nice balance of light and dark. I'm going to do a slightly rounded cap on the top of here. I'm just having so much fun with this painting. And I hope you guys are enjoying this one and give it a try. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll do a few little dabs in here. And redefine the shadow on the bottom. a little bit more white with a peach or with an orange this time to make this highlight stand out even a little bit more. I'm going to take a little bit more of that peach color and add a few little lines here. Now I've got a small angle brush I'm using, flat angle, taking some cobalt, do a fine skinny line right against that orange, gives a nice really nice shadow in there and the blue it's almost cobalt blue is almost uh or ultramarine same thing um almost has a purple tone to it which is really nice and complementary with orange so i'll do that all the way around and if you guys are enjoying these longer tutorials uh, don't forget to comment below let me know what you think. If you're learning more this way, I'm going to continue to do longer tutorials. Anyways, I definitely want my subscribers and future artists out there to learn as much as you possibly can. I'm going to shadow a little bit more in here with cobalt, but mixed with a little bit of white this time. And right down in here carefully. So as I fiddle around with this and add a little bit more shadow and highlights and color, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my next tutorial I want to do. I've got a, well, probably about three, I think about three more winter tutorials, and then I'll get into my florals. It's going to be all about florals for January. Um, but my next one I'm planning to do um, is a snow globe. So I'm really excited about that. I just need to... Uh, get it all together. I've got an idea in mind of what I want it to look like. Uh, I've got to narrow it down as to what I'm going to paint inside of the globe and work out all those little details, but I'm super excited about that one. And I have a couple more tutorials coming up um, all about Christmas ornaments. So I'm going to be doing a few new colors for you guys. Um, and I've got a link below for my winter and Christmas playlist. If you haven't already, check that out. There is so much winter inspiration, um, Christmas ideas, just lots and lots from mountains in the winter, um, cabins, uh, really pretty DIY, make your own Christmas ornaments. I think you guys will really enjoy that. It's, it makes such a nice gift to give to loved ones and friends and family. Okay, so now I've got my filbert brush and I'm coming in with some white, violet, and blue. You can use either blue. I've got the phthalo down here as well as the cobalt or ultramarine blue. 
and I'm kind of just pushing and smushing around. This is going to be part of the snow on the branches. So we're working our way up to the branches um, by building up the, the snow. So I'm going to be doing uh, darker on this far right side, taking more, and this time I'm using cobalt blue. The cobalt uh, has more of that purple tone that I was talking about that I love so much. So I'm going to increase that as well as some violet I just picked up. I just love the way the branches look, how they come around. It almost looks like they're um, protecting that lantern or sheltering it. I get a safe feeling from uh, the composition of this painting. That's the feeling I get from it. And I think that's what drew me to it so much and what made me want to do this for you guys. Cozy, safe, pretty winter scene. And who doesn't love a lantern? Especially like an old-fashioned type of one. I love old-fashioned type of Christmases too. Okay, so I've got a liner brush. Black and purple violet. And I'm rolling and wiggling and pulling. And I said this before in my videos, if you're really nervous and shaky, that'll help make your branches look even better they're not going to be straight by any means. You want to have all those little crooked, wiggly looking branches. So the black and that purple look really, really pretty together too. And there's so much red in that purple violet, which is a really nice complementary color to the turquoise. So we're pulling kind of diagonally and then pulling them almost rounded over and down and this one falls and rests right on this snow next to that lantern i'm just going to continue to build up these branches adding little smaller ones little baby ones with the tip of my brush i'm going to need some water on there too to help pull that paint through I hate to have to cover up all the pretty swirly uh, orbs in the background, but unfortunately you have to, to pull in these branches. And it's a really important part and aspect to this painting. So don't, don't be too afraid of adding those branches. It'll just add to your painting. And you can all, always go back and add some more of the orbs somewhere else if you like. So I'm using a combination again, I said, of the uh, light purple violet, the black, sometimes using more black, sometimes I'm going to be using more of the violet. And then I let off on the pressure so I'm barely touching that canvas when I want them to be lighter in color and smaller. So those little baby ones, that's how you do that, you just let off really lightly with your brush. Okay, after washing my liner brush out, I'm going to take some orange and some white. I'm going to work on some highlights here. I'm just going to pick a few little spots here and there where I would imagine that light from the lantern, that glow from that lantern is falling on the snow and maybe hitting a few of the branches. So just wiggling and scumbling around. Maybe a little bit here. And it's pulling in and mixing a little bit with that violet, and I'm just going to leave that. I think it looks really pretty.
Now I'm going to add some more of that violet right in here on this lantern because it's just such a pretty color. So I pull that across. And I've mixed a little bit of orange. There's just a hint of that orange in there. And I'm adding some more black. I'm going to be darkest up in the corner there and the thickest. So really define that. No water on my brush for that. I'm switching over to a round brush. This one's got a little bit thicker of an end on it. I'm going to start scumbling in, wiggling around some cobalt blue for the shadow on the snow. Right up against that branch. Maybe pick up a little bit of that black or purple. Don't worry at all. It's got to be dark in that area anyways, and you can go over top of it again after. But it is always a good idea to make sure it's fairly dry before doing this. Now my studio is uh, quite warm. I always like to keep it quite warm because I'm a fast painter and I like, well, and I want to be warm. <laughs> and uh, I'm a fast painter, so I like things to dry quickly so I can go on to the next layer of paint. I'm taking some turquoise and white now. Deciding where I want to add this. I think I'm going to do a few little orbs right in here. And I've got a little bit of purple in my brush I see that's coming out there, but that looks pretty. I'll leave that. Build up some more snow. As you can see, you just can build up a really pretty painting so easily by using all these colors and brushes and just doing it step by step. And if you need to stop and pause this video, by all means do that. Don't get overwhelmed. If you have any questions, if you're not sure about something, don't hesitate to ask below. I'll do my best. I'm usually pretty good at keeping up with all my questions and comments I get from you guys. And if you do try this painting, I would love it if you sent me a picture. You can do that through my art page on Facebook, Joni Young Art, and as well as Instagram, and it's Joni Young Art on Instagram too. So I'm adding some more turquoise. I just love the way that turquoise looks down below with that phthalo blue. That minty green color is so pretty. Okay, let's build up this snow a little bit. That green orb back there almost looks like a moon, doesn't it? I never even planned on that, but sometimes that happens in a painting. So I've got a bit of white in with my cobalt blue. And as I'm working on this uh, voiceover and I'm looking at this painting, I'm thinking how pretty would it be to do this as a springtime picture with a lantern again and these branches but instead of snow they were all cherry blossoms so I'm definitely going to be doing that for sure I would use all these same colors maybe pull in a little bit more um, I would add some pink to it I've got a really nice shade of bubblegum pink neon pink that I know would look so pretty for some cherry blossoms I've got my mini fan brush now, taking some of that turquoise, titanium, loading both sides, pulling and turning the brush, and I'll do another little orb right in here, just a couple more, I want to pull that turquoise in and around this, these branches here in the middle, this will be the lightest part of the sky.
Okay, I'm going to pick up my favorite flat brush now. I love this one because it's got the pretty <laughs> clear red handle on it. And it's a nice size to work with too. I've got a little bit of white, a little bit, just a hint of that yellow. And I'm just going to emphasize the light and the orbs in this area a bit more. I know it's going to dry just a little bit darker, so I'm not too worried about that light um, competing with the light from the lantern. Now right back to the snow, violet, white, and blue. And I'm taking a straight cobalt, no white at all, no water on my brush. Just going to add more shadow. Just in all these little areas where I want them to stand out a bit more. I want to stay away from adding too much black. It's all about the color in this. And if you have a really dark purple or dark blue or dark green, why not use that in, for a shadow? It's just so much more interesting. Let's scumble out a little bit more of that blue right in here next to that lantern. We just need a little bit more of a shadow here I think. Now we're going to switch over to a liner brush, work on some more branches. Now we can define some of these that we may have gone over after applying the snow. You could do some branches using um, some of the pastel colors too, adding some white and blue or white and violet. It'll just make them look like they have frost on them or they're further away, maybe. And I'm just using straight purple violet. And then I apologize for this part. I didn't realize that my big hair was <laughs> in the way, but you can see it's just a basic X that I did. One diagonal line across, meeting those points. And then I'll just define it a bit, take a little bit of that paint off right in the center because where that flame and main source of light is coming from, where it's going to be the brightest, it will reflect a little bit right there. So I just lighten that up slightly. I'll just add some more black on the corners where the light won't be hitting it as much and it's going to be a lot more defined and dark. Okay, back to these branches. I'm going to add quite a few more branches and more snow. Playing up on all the colors we're using on this palette today.
Okay, so as I finish up these little branches, I'm gonna switch over, wash this brush off here pretty soon and use a filbert brush and some turquoise. Mix the two together thoroughly. Take a little bit of phthalo and mix that in as well. And I'm going to do a highlight just on the very outside edges of where I have that dark blue. Just to make the shadows stand out a bit more. A little bit right in here too against that purple. It's really pretty. I'm going to add just a little bit of cobalt blue and white right in here. And then just straight cobalt and phthalo blue, no white. I'm going to start adding some phthalo over top of part of the turquoise. And I could use, I want it to look kind of like a phthalo green. I do have phthalo green, but I've got these two colors on my palette that will work just fine. So I may as well use them. So it's um, phthalo blue as a filter over top of the turquoise. If you blend the two colors together, you won't necessarily get that color. You've got to wait for the turquoise to be dry and then apply a light thin layer of the phthalo over top. And I'm going to try doing some orbs here with a filbert brush. So you can do those orbs using lots of different brushes. You get a different effect every time. Definitely enjoyed using the fan brush the most though when creating them. I want a bit of more of a shadow up here so I'm using uh, blue and violet purple. Just a little bit there and then I'll soften it up later on. Okay, I want to take some more black now and define some of these branches, making some of them a little bit thicker. I'm just using, I think I've got an angle brush here. You could use a liner or a very fine angle brush, a small one, it works. So here I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. I've got a damp, clean brush and I'm very gently kind of scumbling around picking up some of that blue, phthalo blue paint. And now I've taken a little bit of white turquoise, blend that in to create a soft, almost pastel phthalo green color. And then back to my liner, add a few more little fine branches and little twigs in here. Some more highlights down below. Sorry for the shakiness, I accidentally just hit the camera. I'm just been waiting for my, trying to wait patiently for my brand new easel to come in. Um, my other one 
broke. I guess I wore it out. And I've just got this canvas propped up on books and whatever I can find to to make do for now. But it works. Nothing's going to stop me from painting or making videos. But I definitely will be enjoying my new easel when it comes in. And I'll be able to do some larger painting tutorials for you guys. Which is always fun. I love working on a big canvas. Highlights here, I'm just again using the orange and white. And the ratio is definitely more white than orange because it will dry darker. So I'm just doing puffy little, almost they look like clouds, but like I said before, it's kind of the same technique as painting clouds and snow. They're very similar. And that looks so pretty. Got some white with a little bit of turquoise. And I'm just defining a beautiful crisp highlight over here. Okay, let's add a little bit more of that yellow and white. And a little bit of turquoise in here, just for a touch of warmth up there, but not too much because I want the most warmth to come from this lantern. Okay, just want to add a little bit more light in these little dots or holes. Um, as the paint dried darker, like I originally wanted them to be that light purple violet color, um, but and it did look really nice, but then it dried a bit darker, so I needed to go back, which I usually do. That's just one of the things about acrylic paint that uh, may not be the greatest. It does dry darker, um, but it is better though if you if you have uh, gesso primed your canvas a couple times, it will help if you have this problem. But with these little holes where the light's coming out of, specifically, I wanted them just to be a little bit brighter. So I just went over them with that light peachy color. I used the orange and the white again for that. And I'm using a phthalo and cobalt for some more branches back here, rather than black, as I just want to change it up a little bit. And again, using a lighter color for branches will make them look like they're farther away. Um, and if you mix a little bit of white with them, like I said earlier, it will almost look like they're frosted, which is kind of just adds to more of the feeling of a soft winter painting. So I'm just going to be working on the last and final details of this painting today. Again, I'm so glad you guys joined me and hope you like this video. I sure had fun painting this and creating it for you. Just going to keep adding little branches, redefining all those areas, cleaning up the edges. And I'm using black with no water on that lantern. And clean up the bottom a little bit. I just kind of brought a little bit too much down there. So 
So I'm going to add some more phthalo to the shadow in the foreground as well as some more highlights and really finish this soft glow. I'm going to pull carefully, and it doesn't have to be straight lines, it can be a little wavy. So a really pretty filter of phthalo blue. And then on either side at the bottom, I'm going to add a little bit darker for a shadow and I'm going to use well you can use cobalt and the purple or just cobalt if you like so just short little flicks here on the edge just like that and then again on the other side and just doing this little technique helps to draw your eyes into the center of the canvas just one little thing like that can can make such a big difference if you really want to be dramatic, you can make it even darker. But I want, I, I really don't want to make it any darker. I want to create, to keep a soft, warm, cozy feel. I'm going to try to sneak in a little bit more of the phthalo on top of the green. Um, so you could, if you have phthalo green, you can use some of that, but I've got these colors here already, so it's easy for me to make that color just simply by using this little bit of phthalo blue. And I'm just kind of scumbling in. My brush is dry, and I'm scumbling it in very carefully over part of the turquoise to make this color. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for subscribing to my channel, continually watching my tutorials weekly, for all your kind comments, all your support. It means the world to me, you guys. You have no idea. Please keep those comments, likes coming. If you haven't yet and you're watching this, please subscribe. And happy painting, you guys. I wish you a wonderful